Ha <laughs> ha, that looks really cute. Oh, I love it! Welcome to the Mike Cassidy Photography Podcast. Thank you, big voice in the sky. My name is Mike Cassidy, and I'm a boudoir photographer from New Jersey, and this is my show. I get to talk to some of the best photographers in the world to find out how they got started, what sparks their creativity, and what hurdles they've had to overcome to get their businesses going. Along the way, we'll probably have a few laughs, but I'm here to have in-depth conversations about all kinds of things you've always wanted to know from the best out there. So stay tuned. You never know what you may learn. Hello, everybody. Michael here. Just wanted to come on today to do a quick show for you. Hope everybody is okay, staying inside, and we're all going to get through this. Just want to talk a little bit today about Instagram, and particularly Instagram for boudoir photographers. And is Instagram for boudoir photographers dead? Yes, my friends and fellow photographers, boudoir photography on Instagram is dead. Or maybe a better way to look at it is it's not like it was a few years ago. What happened? And is there going to be a new monarch to emerge? Well, let's take a look. It all started with such promise. Who doesn't want to have their work seen and get the opportunity to get more customers at the same time, right? Instagram was practically the perfect promotional vehicle for photographers. It was a place to shine and show off the, your best photos to the world. It's hard to believe, but Instagram was born about a decade ago, in October of 2010. Boy, time really flies. In its first year, Instagram gathered about 10 million users. I guess I came across it maybe a year and a half or so after that. I don't really remember much about finding it, except I really didn't use it much at first. I do recall thinking that I didn't make square photos, and at that time, everything on Instagram was square, so I didn't think I fit using that platform. I didn't like it. I didn't want to go and take my photos and start chopping everything up into this weird aspect ratio that was the square that they used. And I was looking back on my own Instagram feed and I could see my first contribution was as my feet uh, it's a rather odd thing to post but it was a photo of me reclining on the couch and for whatever reason I felt that was my good introduction to the service after all what did it really matter and even after a while I was struggling in finding a purpose in, in posting my photos on Instagram and I was looking at one of my other earlier photos and reading my text about why I can't use Instagram because my photos don't fit. And you can see my frustration. This is going way back to 2013. And uh, it wasn't too long after that, though, however, where I guess I either figured out how to adapt my photos to the square format or tools became available um, to take two by three images and, and scale them to fit on that on that service. And even for a while after that, though, Instagram really wasn't a priority for my work I guess I kept posting a few images here and there, and then suddenly, months later, my photos started to get recognized and they started to get likes, some of them hundreds of likes. So it was probably that feedback which caused me to start using the service a bit more regularly. And it wasn't long, even after that, where Instagram was in that full blow-up mode and it suddenly became like a requirement in quotes for photographers and basically for anybody else for that matter to get on Instagram. And for those who followed like tech things, you'd hear about the growth growth of Instagram from like millions of people to tens of millions and hundreds of millions and to eventually over a billion users. You know, the frenzy was on and the age of the Instagram celebrity had arrived. I continued to use the service, but honestly, it was always like a chore uh, for me. You know, and along with the rise of this Instagram celebrity also came the Instagram expert. 
You know a service is popular when it spawns its own offshoot of experts. These Instagram business experts sprouted up like weeds, and along with these experts came lots of rules about posting. I don't know about you, but I always just posted photos when I wanted. I really, I guess I'm a bad rule follower. But these experts extolled the virtues of making schedules and posting photos at specific times to maximize your likes and maximize your growth. Driving engagement was the mantra. It's all you heard about. And somehow, though, these people seem to want to suck the fun out of everything. And when the platform started to come to that point, it wasn't really surprising that things were going to change. Along with this, the hashtag craze was in full swing. People were shelling out real-world dollars to buy fake followers to impress who, I don't know. But it seemed that everyone in the world was caught up in this mania of Instagram. People would do almost anything and everything for likes on their photos and to push forward this dream of reaching the all-important influencer status and the lure of whatever theoretical riches that could follow. It was all too much. When things get to that level of mania, some alarms should start to go off somewhere in your brain. So let's fast forward a few years, and what we know now is that the Instagram of 2020 is no longer the Instagram of 2012. Boy, how times have changed. When it comes to being a boudoir photographer, sadly, it's no longer the amazing growth tool it used to be. There are plenty of boudoir photographers with strong followings on Instagram, but growing a new account may be more difficult than ever, especially more so than it was a few years ago. Why? Well, in a similar manager, manner as Pinterest, Instagram has unofficially put the kibosh on boudoir photography. How? Let's take a look. First of all is hashtags. One of the main tools you could use to help make your photos useful on Instagram were hashtags. We all know about hashtags. Hashtag Dallas Boudoir Photographer. Hashtag Boudoir Studio. Hashtag New York Boudoir. The list goes on and on. For what they were worth, hashtags, although overused, were useful for identifying your shot for certain groups or interests. And that's what people did. How about now? Gone. Most major boudoir photography related hashtags are in a state of perma blocked status and have been for over a year or so. I've noticed a lot of these, maybe even a little bit longer. So if you're using them, they're fairly useless. Tagging your cute photo with hashtag Dallas Boudoir to garner the attention of your local community does nothing. You can certainly add these hashtags to the photo still in the text, but Instagram has these tags blocked, so searches for them do not work. It seems to be the new unfortunate future of boudoir photography on Instagram. I noticed there are still some smaller boudoir-related hashtags which are still functioning and haven't been blocked yet. But it looks like most of these major hashtags are blocked, and the future of the boudoir hashtag is probably pretty bleak if it's not already finished. And this doesn't seem to be temporary either. Before posting with hashtags, make a quick search to even see if this hashtag is even functioning. If you haven't looked at the hashtags you're using for a while, you may be a bit surprised. Another thing that is working against you is AI. As we know, boudoir is predominantly shots of women in lingerie of some sort. And even though in your eyes, your work is pretty, Instagram doesn't necessarily see it that way. You're operating in this fringy gray area of the platform. Instagram uses machine learning and artificial intelligence to scan content. The extent to which this is integrated into the system, I don't really know. But the next time you have a boudoir photo deleted... Odds are it's probably not a person reporting you. It's their artificial intelligence scanning and trying to identify content that doesn't follow their community guidelines. Instagram has released information on how AI is used to select content for your explore tab. You know, so you see lots of things that you enjoy there. So you can only presume they're using this same technology on other areas of the platform as well. And now that Instagram has like over a billion users, you know, the task of moderation is just too vast for humans. So there really is no option than to have this scan and and check photos. 
And another thing you need to start getting a little familiar with as an Instagram user is the good old Instagram post remove messages that you'll probably start saying from time to time. It goes something like this. Your post goes against our community guidelines. As you log in, you'll see this big warning message and it'll show you, you know, you can't use graphic violence and hate speech and nudity and all these things on there and get familiar with it. It'll say, your post has been deleted. We removed your post because it doesn't follow our community guidelines on nudity or pornography. They're equating boudoir with pornography. If you violate our guidelines again, your account may be restricted or or be disabled. And it goes down to list all of the things that are sketchy and you can't put on uh, Instagram. How does this work? Well, computers are rapidly learning about images. These systems can identify and know the content of your photos. And if you need a practical example of this, you can just break out your Android phone. If you're a Google Images user or a Google Photos user, go to the little search box on Google Photos and type in a term like dog or beach, and Google will magically show you all the photos of dogs or beaches in your camera roll. This works without tagging or any kind of tags in in the photos, and most people don't use tags anyway. They have used the power of analyzing like billions and billions of photos and taught their computers what a dog is. And not just one type of dog, but they can identify all kinds of dogs. Likewise, as silly as this sounds, Instagram is well aware of what a fully nude buttocks is and has taught its system to identify and purge those photos. I'm guessing, you know, like partially nude buttocks get a pass, but you know, that's another whole discussion there. So where does this leave us? Of course, the intention of all this artificial intelligence is good. A service like Instagram is forced to walk a difficult line and they can't please everybody all the time. Finding the right balance using a technology like this is tough and I can't imagine it's going to get it right in every single instance. I've personally been the victim of this. I've had one particular photo that existed on my Instagram feed for a couple years, maybe one, two years, and I decided to repost it. This is going back a couple months ago. And within like 10 minutes, I received a your post has been deleted message, you know, and then weirdly and interestingly, a few days later, I received that same message again. And this time it was for the copy, the other copy of that photo that peacefully existed in my feed for a few years. Receiving one of these messages is a bit jarring at first. You're like, what did I do? You know, that photo has been there not doing anything for a couple of years. And like, why now? Well, most likely it wasn't a person doing this and reporting you. It was their AI. Once it identified the photo as hashtag or quotes like offensive uh, and does its thing. When it sees that same photo again, it like automatically re- removes it. So I know it's like scanning everything in my uh in my feed you know and looking back at that particular photo which was like a close-up of a buttocks although it wasn't nude i can see that that photo was probably pushing the line a bit and maybe it was a bit much for instagram and to a degree i get it and lesson learned and i haven't reposted that that photo but the bottom line here is that Instagram is stepping up its moderation policies. I don't know the exact limits or the number of strikes that you can get before being banned or, or thrown off the service, but boudoir photographers need to be a bit more vigilant about the type of content they are posting. If you're going to exist on Instagram as a boudoir photographer, you're going to have to play by their rules. So where does this put Instagram as a tool for a boudoir photographer? Well, The walls are certainly closing in. The wild and free days are long behind us. It seems for me, at least, Instagram may be slowly falling out of favor as a way to promote my personal business. The combination of these facts I've mentioned, and it's also getting tougher and tougher to gain new followers on the platform. This implementation of this all-overseeing AI and the blockage of all these industry-related hashtags Growing your account is definitely going to be more challenging than ever. In addition to that, there's also evidence that your feed isn't even being seen by as many followers as it used to be either. In the same manner that Facebook sort of chopped organic reach to its users of its Facebook pages, it may be doing the same thing to Instagram users as well. 
know so where does this all go from here as always you need a strong foundation at home you know meaning your website and your mailing list Instagram can't stop you from displaying whatever photo you want on your own business website. They can't also stop you from promoting your website as you wish and in the manner that works best for you. Trends come and go. Who knows how much longer people will be interested in Instagram anyway. Uh, Take advantage of the platform while you can, but it's never a smart move to have all of your marketing eggs in just one basket, especially one that you don't control. So what are your thoughts on this? Talk to you soon.